Hello everyone, it's Tristan back with another video. Yesterday I posted a video of Mickey preaching Psalms 1. Definitely go and check that out. Very powerful video. As you can see, scenery is a little bit different today. As you can see, uh, I'm out in the wilderness. I'm just in enjoying God's creation. God has a beautiful creation, doesn't he? So today we're going to be asking a question. What is that small fox? So the small fox, as, as the uh, Strong's Concordance mentions, two different definitions. One is as a jackal, which is just referring to the fox. One, the other definition is a cunning person. So we're going to look at the context of just, just a fox and a metaphor for it. So... If we look at Psalms 2.13, we're going to see a chapter about love and how love is growing between two people. It says, The fig tree puts forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Where the love is growing, the vineyards are blossoming. It just keeps getting better. Oh, my dove, that art in the clefts of the rock. In the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Then there's the need to round up a bunch of small foxes. So it says, take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. And a lot of people may ask, what does this mean? What I think this means is that although the the vineyard was blossoming, there's a need to round up what may affect this love. There's the little flaws that we, we may overlook, little things, and they have the possibility to ruin the vineyard because it's a small fox that ruins that vine. We are to take those foxes. So, this is one context where it's the small thing that ruins the vines, you can also see this with uh, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, it mentions that the uh, the the dead the dead fly gives uh, gives the perfume a bad smell. That one small bad fly will give the whole perfume a bad smell. We are to take that fox because it's going to spoil the vineyard. But you may see the other context that I mentioned, which is a cunning person. Jesus mentions this fox. Uh, he actually refers to King Herod as the fox. As a cunning person, a worthless person that is only living for his own kingdom, not the kingdom of heaven. So, I also found one other place that it really mentions another person as a fox. So, if we go to Ezekiel 13, verse 4. We are going to see this. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. So, we look at this verse and we realize that people can be like the foxes. Like the foxes would be the cunning, worthless person that lives for his own kingdom. We are to pick up our cross daily and walk with Jesus and die to the flesh daily. So, just like the verse that I preached on the other day, where Jesus says, Go tell that fox I cast out demons. We see there are evil people that try to affect what is good. Evil people which uh, pervert God's creation. And God's creation, as you can see, is very, very beautiful. So... A way that people pervert it is by just not listening to God. That's a, that's a big thing, in my opinion. Because, as Mickey preached yesterday, something that really spoke to me that Mickey preached yesterday was that the wicked are like the chaff. He talked about the wheat you break up. The wheat falls and the chaff blows away. Those are the wicked people. And... 
if we look in Jeremiah 22, this is the chapter right after when Jeremiah talks about the besieged of this kingdom. There's a kingdom that was being sieged. And these people were probably, from my understanding, stuck in this kingdom because people were sieging them. And they were trying to lock away in this kingdom, trying to hide from the people. And what God wants us to do is listen to Him and His counsel. Because the king didn't want to surrender, but he already had a losing battle. It says in Jeremiah 22, thus says the Lord God, Go down to the house of the king of Judah and speak there this word. See, this fox, this, this king that was living for himself. God even calls for this fox to come to repentance. Because none should perish, but all should come to repentance. And say, hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah that sits upon the throne of David. Thou and thy servants and thy people that enter in by these gates. Thus says the Lord, Execute you judgment and righteousness, and deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor. And do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow, neither shed innocent blood in this place. God was warning this cunning man that if he doesn't surrender... He's just going to cause all this suffering and this pain that does not need to occur. If he just surrenders, everything's going to go a lot better for him. Proverbs says that he who handles a matter wisely will find good. And apparently, he was just this king was not handling this matter wisely at all, which can be referred to as the fox, as Jesus says, and... I think it's really powerful to look at how this fox is able to affect us in our daily lives. Through the little things, through the false teachers, and just through anything that's negative toward our life. Things that are ungodly, we need to take more recognition of that. Realize we got to take us the foxes. Realize there might be a fox in our midst. A cunning person that is not healthy for our lives. And I will be posting a video next Thursday. Tomorrow will be a video of Mickey's. And be looking out for that. I appreciate everybody that watches this video. Y'all have a blessed night. And I will be talking to y'all later.